Hello, thank you for joining me today for today's video on plant pigment analysis. My name is Cynthia Sargent and I'm the biology curriculum developer here at Pasco Scientific. And I want to show you how you can enhance a traditional lab activity using two sensors, a colorimeter and a spectrometer. So a lot of biology teachers in their classroom already do a great activity with their students, which is to separate the pigments from green spinach leaves into the different pigments that are actually in the leaves using paper chromatography. So the paper chromatography allows students to see that yes, there is a green pigment in the spinach leaves, but there are also other colors of pigments as well. There's yellow colored pigments and orange colored pigments. So that's a great activity to do with your students. The colorimeter and spectrometer just allow students to gather additional data that help make the activity a little more meaningful for them. So first I'm going to start with the colorimeter. I have a colorimeter in a Sparklink Air that's attached to my computer here. And I'm going to show you the data in SparkView. I've already calibrated the colorimeter. It's a simple green button calibration on the front of the sensor. So I used a cuvette of ethanol and I used that as my blank because that's the substance that I extracted pigments from. So to prepare the pigments for analysis with the spectrometer and the colorimeter, I took some leaves, chopped them into little pieces with some scissors, and soaked them in ethanol. And you can also use a mortar and pestle to grind the leaves up further. And you can then um, push the extract through cheesecloth to get rid of the solid material, leaving, your, leaving you just with the liquid pigment extract. So, I've already set up a vial here with my spinach pigment extract. So because my colorimeter is calibrated and ready to go, I can just take my spinach pigment extract, place that into the colorimeter, snap the lid closed, and hit record. So I've created a page in SparkView that shows the four colors of the colorimeter. So the lights within the colorimeter shine specific wavelengths of light through that solution. And the choices of light colors are blue, red, green, and orange. For the plant pigment analysis, I like for students to look at all four of the colors for comparison. You could also have them look at transmittance. You can set SparkView up to measure a specific color, and you can measure the absorbance or transmittance of that color. In an analysis of plant pigments, we're going to relate the data to photosynthesis. So what we're really interested in is what colors of light are the leaves absorbing. If they're absorbing that color of light, then that means that the plants are actually going to make use of that color of light. If it's being reflected back, then the plants aren't able to use that color of light. So of the four colors, blue and red show the highest absorbance and green and orange show the lowest absorbance. So this would help students understand that the green pigments that make the leaf green or the yellow pigments that they see on the chromatography paper are actually reflecting those colors. They're not absorbing much of that. And it's the blue and the red that is going to be the most useful to the plant to obtain energy for photosynthesis. So with the colorimeter, Again, you get great data that can go along and enhance the chromatography setup that you normally have students go through. The spectrometer will provide a broader range of wavelengths, so what you're able to do with the spectrometer is get the complete absorbance spectrum for the pigments and leaves rather than just a snapshot look at those four different colors that the colorimeter provides. So for the spectrometer, I'm going to show you the spinach extract again, and we're also going to compare it to plum. So I use the same method of cutting the leaves into tiny pieces and soaking them in some ethanol to be able to get an extract of the pigments present in these purple col colored plum leaves. So I'm going to switch to Pasco's spectrometer app, and there are options listed at the top to do a number of different things. In this case, we're interested in analyzing a solution. We've got our pigments dissolved in ethanol, and we want to see the absorbance of all of these visible light wavelengths. Before I get started, I need to calibrate the spectrometer, and there are two calibration buttons near the record button. 
So first I calibrate dark. So I take my reference solution, again it's just ethanol, since that's what I extracted my pigments in, and I press calibrate dark. And then I press calibrate light. So the spectrometer is turning the internal lights off during the calibrate dark procedure, and then it's turning the lights on in the calibrate light procedure. So now that my spectrometer is calibrated, I'm gonna take my spinach pigment extract, put that into the spectrometer, and hit record. And you can see a higher absorbance of the blue light and the red light. I can get a little better view of this data by clicking and dragging on the axes here. So biology teachers definitely wouldn't be too surprised at this result, again the peaks being in the blue and red wavelength ranges. But this is really cool for students because typically they only get this view of data from a picture in their textbook. So for them to extract pigments from real leaves and put it into a spectrometer and get the absorbance spectrum themselves is a really meaningful activity for them. And it's easy to compare different leaves. So really easy to send students into inquiry following the spinach procedure. They can bring in all different kinds of leaves, extract the pigments like those in the plum, and easily compare different kinds of leaves to each other. So I put the plum pigment extract into the spectrometer. I'm gonna hit record again. And we'll see where that peak is there in the blue. So you can see still peaks at the blue and the red, but if I stop data collection and turn on the comparison tool, I can see both absorbance spectra at the same time. And you can see that the solution two which I'm going to rename Plum, has a couple key differences when compared to the spinach. So the spinach, again, had those peaks at blue and red, but very low absorbance at green and yellow wavelengths. The Plum absorbs a lot more of the green and the yellow, and so it's reflecting less of those colors, making it look less green than the spinach. And it also has a lower absorbance of red, so it's also reflecting more red light than the spinach. And it has a higher absorbance in the blue light wavelength. So the spectrometer, again, is great to help your students see for themselves the absorbance spectrum for a collection of pigments extracted from leaves, but you can also extend the inquiry into photosynthesis by using the spectrometer to analyze different light sources. So in the next part of the video, we're going to take a look at how you can obtain the emission spectra for different light sources. So in the next part of this video, we're going to look at how we can use the spectrometer to analyze different light sources. So this can be another great extension to your study of photosynthesis with your students. So I've replaced the use of cuvettes in the spectrometer with a fiber optic cable. And instead of analyzing a solution like we did for the pigment extract, now we want to analyze a light source. So in the PASCO spectrometer app, I've selected Analyze Light. So it takes me to a new page within the application. And now on my y-axis, it shows intensity. So when I click the record button and hold the fiber optic cable just directly underneath that light source, I get a good view of the wavelengths that are being emitted from that light source. And I can stop recording so I get a record of that light source's emission spectrum. And then I can move the fiber optic cable to a different light source and repeat the process. And then using comparison mode, I can look at those two together and scale my axes a little bit here to get the greatest view of my data. So you can see that the main wavelengths that are emitted are similar for these two light sources. We get some blue light, mainly green light and orange light. But you can also see a few important differences. If we look a little bit closer at the blue light part of the spectrum, the second light bulb, source two here, had a greater amount of light emitted in the blue wavelengths. And if we move over and analyze the yellow part of the spectrum, 
that second light source was emitting less yellow light than the first light source was. And then we can see a big difference in the orange part of the spectrum. So you can see that first light source is emitting a lot of orange light, and the second light source is emitting less of that. So comparing two white light sources with your students, they both look white, although students might see that this one's a little more yellow, this one's a little more blue in just the appearance to their eyes. This can be the starting point for them to make predictions about what the rate of photosynthesis would be for each of these two light sources. So you can have your students go perform experiments using one of two main methods for getting photosynthetic rate. One would be to place spinach leaves in a bottle and use a carbon dioxide sensor to measure the rate at which those leaves take in carbon dioxide. And you can see a procedure like that in our video titled Photosynthesis and Respiration. And you can also use an experiment that is commonly done in advanced biology classes using the chemical DPIP, a blue colored chemical, to measure photosynthetic rate. The DPIP will accept excited electrons that are produced when light is absorbed by pigments and will turn colorless when it accepts those electrons. So if you place these cuvettes with DPIP and chloroplast under light, then the color will decrease over time. And the colorimeter is a great way to quantify that change in color over time. So this is a great way to get your students thinking about light sources and plant pigments and to relate the data from different sources, a colorimeter, a spectrometer, a carbon dioxide sensor, and be able to bring those, the data from those different sources together for a good understanding of photosynthesis and what affects that photosynthetic rate. Thank you for joining me today.